Hey, it's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today's the 17th of June. It is a beautiful day here at Baker's Green Acres. I am uh, out on the back 40 here in my 1957, ooh, see if I show you, my 1957 Jeep. Kind of been working on this for several years with the kids and it's it's not finished yet, but it's drivable. Um, I made a video the other day kind of announcing that we were going to close Baker's Green Acres and sell the farm. And uh, I got quite a few comments about it, and that video reached a lot of people. <clears throat> and I want to clarify what is happening here, and I'll make darn sure that you understand that certain things are not happening. Um, yeah, we did go through kind of a, a rough period with the state of Michigan and uh, the Attorney General's office. We did. And uh, we came through that. And uh, then we continued our business and put the business back together and uh, operated it for a few years. And, and now we've just gotten to a point where we want to make a change. And uh, I think that comes as a real shock to a lot of people because they think, well, farm family, you know, you just, that's all you do is you farm. Well, we're actually a military family and we have been in farming for about 13 years now. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong. I mean, we haven't had any contact with any of these organizations. Uh, I think my relationship with them is probably okay. Uh, I think we all learned some things through that. Um, you know, I definitely have thoughts about the people that we should put in and the people we should not put in. Um, and that's a whole different situation. But, you know, there was one comment, the government wins again. It's nothing like that. Absolutely nothing like that. I'm leaving Baker's Green Acres on my terms and I'm going on to something else. I kind of threw in there a little bit that I was thinking about getting a shrimp boat and heading down to the Gulf Coast. And that was a reference to Forrest Gump, you know. And he's one of my heroes. He just follows directions, does what he's told, things work out okay. And I think we're all like that in a lot of ways. Um, so there's no hard feelings with anybody over leaving here. Uh, this has been a profitable business. Um, the business has appreciated on schedule, maybe even better. And it's time for us to leave for other reasons. Some of them are personal reasons. Uh, you know, the time in American history is, is a big factor in this. Um, a traditional family farm that operates like this, uh, you're up against industrial agriculture. Uh, they want the land. So, uh, you know, it's nice to want but if they make it a sweet enough deal for you and they're willing to pay for the land, then, then you, you're at a place where you have options. So that's, that's a good thing, you know. Um, the political process, I mean, we're all watching that happen. And basically what happened to me and my family over the feral swine thing was a political process. And a lot of heads were turned. A lot of apple carts were upset, and a lot of it's to the good. Um, you, you know, you're going into an election now, and you, you get to make an informed decision about who you're going to elect for governor based on what you saw when, when we went through this whole thing, you know. It wasn't an animal thing. It was a, it was a property rights thing. It was a Fifth Amendment thing. And uh, if you don't know about this, you probably need to get informed before you go in there and vote. And the system's good. You vote for the people that are going to work for you the way you want them to work for you. And if they're not, you don't vote for them. But that's a whole different video for another time, maybe. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, we're leaving on our terms. Um, and it's not, we're not being forced out or pressured out or anything like that, bribed out, nothing like that. It's a, it was a decision between me, my wife, and my kids uh, that we wanted to make some changes in the way we do things. This has been great. It really has. We've all learned so much through this process. And just to sidetrack a little bit, 
Uh, the reason I did this was because of a few people that I knew when I was in the service early on. You know who I'm talking about there, Bauman. Uh, guys that I met that were farm kids, when we would be in what I thought were very difficult situations, they'd cock their hat to one side and just get a dumb grin on their face and press on. And we would make it through, and you'd get to the other side and say, well, that wasn't that bad. These were farm kids. Because my kids have had to deal with so much. Uh, and then they got the added bonus of, you know, having the state come down on us with their goons. That was, uh, that was a real learning experience. Um, but, you know, I, I don't want to cast any negative light on the people who were under orders to do what they did. They were not goons. Uh, I've always had a good relationship with the state police. I don't know any DNR people but I'm sure that they're dedicated to what they do. They were under orders. Uh, their leadership at the time was being swayed by political interests that were way out of line, way, way out of line. And, uh, you know, we could go into that, but I'm not, that's not the purpose of this. Um, and our local police have been good, good folks too. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, the farm is for sale. We've already had people look at it. Um, we would like to sell it as a business, a turnkey business, and uh, don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but the herd is for sale, and I've had people call and ask me, how much? Um, call me on the phone. Call me on the phone and let's talk. Let me find out what you need. I am look liquidating the entire herd. Mangalitsa business has been really good to us. The pasture poultry business has been really good to us. And... If I didn't have something else that I wanted to go on to, I'd just continue to do it. But I got other things that I want to do. Um, most of the people that are going to hear this video are my, you know, my followers from uh, Baker's Green Acres, Anyone Can Farm. And I'm going to continue that because no matter what I do, I'm going to continue to farmstead unless I, unless I get that shrimping boat and head down to the Gulf Coast. But... No, we, we, we always want a farmstead. I think it's a, that's really where I got started when I was still active duty. We had a little place, and we got some chickens, and then we got some pigs. And then, you know, before you knew it, we were learning how to butcher our own animals. And then we got some cows, and we butchered them. So we just, it was just an experiment, really. And it became a way of life after a while. And then we, when we got out of the service, it was, well, let's do this for a, a living, and uh, it was a, a learning curve because farmers generally are lifelong farmers. You know, they learned it from their parents and their parents learned it from their parents. But to get into farming and think, I'm going to be a farmer, it's like saying, I'm going to fly jetliners, you know. I think I would like to do that. Well, there's a learning curve. And I was just ignorant enough to jump into it thinking that, well, I can do this. And, you know, it wasn't easy. It was a learning a learning process, but I go on to my next thing with all of those lessons learned. So it puts me in a good place, and basically my next thing is I got to decide what I want to wear to work. You know, do I want to wear a shirt with my name on it, or, you know, do I want to wear a sport coat and tie, or do I want to wear a suit? It, it just, uh, we'll see, but I'm not making any of those decisions until the opportunities present themselves to me. I'm not really not sure what I want to do. I got a couple things in mind, but I don't know. But the farmstead thing we will do because that's where will be my base of operations and my uh, my wife and kids will be there. And, you know, I got, a, like I said, I got a whole bunch of different challenges on this new property that I don't have here. Here I had high fertility because it was a farm. The grass was good. You know, the trees are good. This is a beautiful beautiful farm um, I would hate to see it fall into the wrong hands but you know anybody can buy it um, the wrong hands I mean somebody who would abuse it and just tear all the trees out so they can plant corn and you know that's what they do here and we've been here for the last 14 years kind of preserving it and it hasn't happened but uh like when I first got here, um, if you touched any wetlands, they'd be on you like flies on a rib roast. 
but now they routinely drain wetlands, get those cattails out of there. And it's with the blessing of, you know, state regulators. So that shouldn't come as any surprise, you know, in what I've found in businesses that uh, you use regulations and regulators against your adversaries and that's what they do and now the regulations and regulators will be against small farms because it's uh it's industrial ag's turn i guess it's their turn and i you know they haven't really been in business very long since like just after world war ii like the 60s late 60s and it's interesting to watch i don't know where it'll turn out i see a lot of soil getting blown off and i see a lot of big equipment and a lot of ten dollar an hour jobs but that's about it we'll see a lot of fat kids in school we'll see uh, but for us it's a good thing that we're leaving we are all excited and it wasn't a win lose scenario at all that was settled several years ago and that is over as far as i'm concerned so uh this is mark coming to you from baker's green acres i'll be back at you because there's been some other things come up that I'd like to comment on in the farm world, in the homestead world, and uh, I've missed doing this. So thanks. Remember, anyone can farm.